Pitt enters the college hoop season with a national ranking and high hopes. The Billikens have a brand new coach who's no stranger to the NCAA tournament. An early season road upset would be a great way to end those St. Louis Blues. It is the Pitt Panthers and the St. Louis Billikens coming at you next. Welcome to day three of the Hispanic College Fund Challenge. We're in the Peterson Event Center. The Panther fans are already on their feet. The two teams that come out of this with 2-0 records will meet in the final game in this tournament this evening. We welcome you to our coverage on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh. I'm John Sanders, and we welcome Eric Murdoch to our Big East broadcast team, former great at Providence College and a guy I'm sure who remembers playing against some physical Pittsburgh teams. Always. Coming in here, you knew you were in for a very physical game. After every pit game, it was like I had to put my body in an ice bucket of water. And uh, you can expect the same thing tonight. These guys are going to really get after you defensively. They're really going to keep you outside on the perimeter. And if you do collapse the defense and kick it out, you're gonna, they're going to put a hand up in your face. So just a great uh, defensive effort you're going to see tonight from the Panthers. New coach for St. Louis, but certainly an old coach as far as success is concerned in college basketball. The record, whether he is at Utah or wherever he's been, and he moves now to St. Louis after being off for three years, and that's Rick Majerus. And Rick Majerus, he has an unbelievable winning percentage. I think it's at 740-something, and uh, he's a guy that wherever he's gone, he's won. Uh, what he's going to bring to this program is instant credibility. I think St. Louis, even though they won 20 games last year, it, it's just not enough nowadays. And Rick Majerus is, is a guy who's going to come in, and he's simply going to win. Let's take a look at our star watch for tonight's game. It features a couple of guards. Kevin Lish, terrific shooter, good defender. And, of course, LeVance Fields, he's the guy that makes Pittsburgh go. He is. He is the engine that makes this team go, and uh, he's a guy that's the instigator out there. He's really going to create a lot for his offense, but where he's going to be valuable is defensively, keeping guards out and making it hard for the Billigans to get into their offense. A well, couple of good guards right there, Eric, but there's some pretty good guys playing inside as well. A healthy Sam Young is off to a great start for Pitt. Back-to-back -back career highs, 22 on Friday, 24 yesterday. A-10 Big East matchup is straight ahead. If you want to make tonight's Big East basketball game is being brought to you by Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. Peterson Event Center normally sold out, and it probably will be throughout this season. Well, they've had great success in this arena since they opened it. Hit ranked number 20. St. Louis not ranked. There are the starting lineups. For the Billikens of St. Louis, and keep in mind they've got a trio of pretty good guards who play very well. And the other guy is Tommy Liddell, second team preseason, all A-10, along with Lish, who we talked about in the open. Meanwhile, their Panthers starting lineup features a highly touted freshman. His name is Dewan Blair. He's from Shenley High School right here in Pittsburgh in the City League, and he is also off to a pretty good start. Their guard-oriented team, Rick Majerus. Back on the sidelines, told me today his health is good. He feels fine. He said, I got up this morning and swam a mile. 21st season overall, 424 victories. And he's always had a knack of taking his team deep into the NCAA tournament. And this guy has seen nothing but NCAA tournaments in his five years as the head basketball coach. The other thing about him, Eric, he has never lost a game in the month of November as a head coach. So it's an unbelievable track record, and uh, he's just used to winning. Opening tip goes all the way to the pit bench. And it'll be Billiken basketball. Eberhardt, Meyer, Polk, Lish, Liddell. Both teams are heavily oriented toward guard play, but a little change there in that Husak, who played so well yesterday, he had a career high game of 14, number 44. He is in there. He played terrific basketball last night. And this is what you're going to see here. A lot of ball movement, a lot of player movement, and uh, they're going to work the shot clock down to get the best available shot. Lish, their leading scorer so far. That's Liddell, the third. Puts it back out to Eberhardt. Eberhardt, a junior college transfer. Shot clock inside 10. Lish trying to make a move. Pulls up, shoots. Too hard. Rebound to Fields. The other thing the Fields does pretty well, Eric, he can rebound the basketball. He's a great rebounder from the point guard position. Uh, there's nothing that he cannot do on the basketball court. He's a great leader out there. Ramon, basically a three-point shooter. Almost all of his attempts are three-pointers. 
and they're going to have to run him off a lot of screens. Here he comes right now to get him some shots. So he drives and puts it in. That right is on, not his norm. Right on cue, but uh, he, he's going to have to use those screens to get himself free. He had eight on Friday, had a dozen in the game yesterday. Pittsburgh very solid defensively, do not allow a lot of penetration. Well, the other two teams were Houston Baptist as a steal by Blair and a North Carolina A&T. They played earlier today. And both these teams defeated those teams in the Friday Saturday round. Cook inside comes up short and there's a rebound by the big man. Bouchak. He's a seven footer from Mount Vernon, Iowa. And most of these players are Midwestern born around the St. Louis area. And Hushak is going to have to be big on the boards for this Billiken team to compete tonight. The other part of that, of course, Dewan Blair knows he's going to be facing guys who are taller than him. But Blair says his reach is about 7'3", so he has the reach to, to match a 7-footer. And he definitely brags about that. Yes, Lich. he does. <laughs> Here's Lich working on Ramon. Again, the shot clock winding down to 5. That one will not go, and there's another rebound by Blair. He got in foul trouble in Saturday's game. On the Over the top, this man. What a great play by Phil. Just seeing the floor and throwing it up to his big man for the hammer dunk. This is how athletic, and the change for Sam Young. Last year, he didn't practice a lot because his knees hurt so much. He's missed no practice time this year. He feels he's 100% for the first time in his three years here at Pittsburgh, and that shows you what he can do. Yeah, you definitely can tell that he's very healthy this year, and he's coming in. A uh, guy that's very athletic, a guy that's very strong, and uh, he runs the floor very well and fields with the heads-up pass. Early 4-0 lead for the Panthers. And the Oakland Zoo right behind us, loud as always. Course, yeah. In the old place where you played, they were right behind the benches, right? They were right behind the benches, and you couldn't hear anything in the old field house, and you can't hear anything now. You saw the numbers for Young off to a great start, averaging 23 points a game. His career high coming into this year was 21. He had 22 on Friday, and he had 24 in the game yesterday. And he wears number 23 because his idol is Michael Jordan. And uh, he sort of plays like him, the way he's built and the way he runs the floor. He is very athletic. Eberhardt out in front, gets it to Lish. They look inside to Hushak, and he's got it. Turns, tried to make a pass, and that's the first foul. John Cal making the call, and it goes on the big man, uh, Jamie. Dixon was asked about Blair who got in foul trouble early in the game yesterday. He said well that happens to big men. It happened to the people he's had before. He said you just have to watch it and play through it. He did get. Two quick fouls yesterday and sat 16 minutes of the opening half. Well that's where all the physical play is inside the paint and uh, what coach Dixon said yesterday is that they played a lot without Aaron Gray last year and uh, you know they're sort of used to playing without a center. They can play a lot of you know they can go small and, and play any way you want to play but uh, they, they get used to playing without the center. Luke Meyer is four for four from the free throw line on the young season. He gets his Billikens on the board. Jarris has beaten a pit team twice, both times in the NCAA tournament. 89, he was coaching Ball State, and in 93, when he was coaching Utah. Cook outside. He's the fifth year senior, transfer from East Carolina. And he sets up Blair, who puts it up softly but misses the shot, gets it back, missed again. One more time. Three times he tried to put it back in the hole. Big fella's going after it. Yeah, but there's a lid on that thing right now for him. Man, Sam Young. Hit the deck that time defensively. It got back up. We're going to have our first Panther sub. And good job by Blair to get inside. Help set up the steal. Fields pulls up. Right back out off the back iron. 4 2 Panthers. Liddell feed underneath by Eberhardt. Finishes the shot, gets his first basket. And that's a nice play by Liddell. Just coming off the screen, a little penetration and finding his teammate under the basket. I think for the Billikens to be successful tonight, Liddell really has to be aggressive going to the basket. Slow start shooting for the Panthers. They're two of six. Came into this game shooting well over 50% from the field. Again, Ronald Ramon inside goes back to Young. He's going to work on Eberhardt and he gives it up to Fields. The shot clock heads to 10. 
Great defensive possession by the Billikens. Well, these two defenses are very much alike because much of what was learned by Ben Howland and by Jamie Dixon came when they were at Northern Arizona. And they go to camp with Rick Majerus and they pretty much take Rick Majerus' defense and play it here. And what Jamie Dixon said is that Rick Majerus is his mentor and he adopted a lot of philosophies that Rick Majerus has. He had a three pointer in the ball game yesterday. But the big man cannot hit that time. He shocked. Getting a start. He only had a couple of starts all of last year, but he played very well in the game yesterday. Young for three. Again, that's too hard. Another good defensive possession by the Billikens, keeping the perimeter players on the outside and letting them, making them take long jump shots. And that is not the Panthers' forte, although coming into the ballgame, they've been shooting the three pointers fairly well. 22 out of 61. They shoot more than St. Louis does. Now the Panthers are two of nine. Baseline won't go. Tipped out of bounds and it belongs to Pitt. So we'll have subs three for Pitt. We'll have one coming in as Dwayne Polk will check back in. The flying Sam Young off to another good start and the Panthers are locked up at 4-4. A little over five minutes gone in the opening half. We're tied at four. Rick Majerus, after a three-year absence, is back on the coaching sidelines. And he, before the season, talked about what brought him back. I like practice. I enjoy practice. I like keeping score. You know, I mean, I, you know, at ESPN, I had uh, a lot of fun. It was an honor and a privilege to work for him. And I genuinely enjoyed, um, you know, the the... I guess the, the, the dynamics of having to televise the games and provide access and discovery. But I, but I missed, you know, working with the guys. And he is back working with the guys. The Panthers are back with the basketball. Cold shooting start for them. Benjamin is checked in along with Brown. Brown was injured all of last year and had some injury problems in preseason this year. But he's out there. Fields. Here comes Brown to the baseline. Pulls up for a jumper, bending, bending, off. No good. Scramble for the loose ball, and Lish comes out of there for the Billikens. And this is a scrappy bunch of guys from St. Louis. They're going to scrap on the boards. They're going to go after loose balls, and Lish, Lish right there coming up with the loose rebound. And this is Polk, primarily a starter, but they went with the bigger man today, so he was out of the starting lineup, but he's on the court now. Quick turnaround, no good. Too strong. Fields the rebound. Back come the Panthers. Trying to push it up. Great catch by Young, but he couldn't get his balance to make the shot. Scramble underneath, fighting for the rebound, getting the offensive board that time was Terrell Biggs. And Biggs is a big body inside. He takes up a lot of space, and uh, that's what he does. He's going to go after the offensive rebounds, and, and that's how he's going to score with putbacks. Feed to him. Up and under. Nicely done. And again, heads up feed by LeVance Field. And LeVance Field, he has the vision. He can see everything that's going out there on the floor, and he does a great job in pick and roll situations. Polk, not much of a score. He will run the offense. Lish has been their leading scorer so far this year, averaging 19 a game. There's Liddell. Fields on him. He's got the big size advantage over LeVance Field. Lish. Starts a baseline move, then comes back, and we're down to five again. Shoots the three, comes up short. Guess who got the rebound? Levance Fields Mr. again. Fields, like I said, a great rebounder from that position. Oh, what a runner that time by Levance Fields. He kept his dribble, put up a floater, and hit it his first basket. And all point guards, I think you should instill a little runner in your game. You don't have to go all the way to the basket to where it's a Big chance of getting it blocked. Nice little runner by Fields right there. Second time the Panthers have scored four unanswered, so they have opened up a four-point lead for the second time. Here's Eberhardt right at the foul line. Spins, puts it up, bending good. And I like Eberhardt. He's a big body inside. He locates the defense. He puts it on the floor, makes a nice spin move. And uh, last couple of days of seeing him play, I'm really impressed with his ability. He's got four so far. He is 6'7", 250. Junior college transfer from Coffeyville Junior College. Fields oh. buries the three. He hit the deck, but he hits the three. And Fields has all the moves, the shaking baits, and uh, going through the legs and behind the back, pulling up for the three. Man, just an unbelievable individual play. And he has a knack, even though his shooting has really been off so far this year, under 30 percent. 
He has a knack of hitting a big shot like that one right there. He's the Robert Ory of college basketball. Everhard up and under and makes it. So he got a nice speed that time from Lynch. Barry Everhard with six early points. And the big fella is very mobile inside. There's not a shot that he can't make. Uh, he can either go left, he can go right. Right there with a nice little reverse. Three point lead, Panthers. Everhard has made three out of five. This is Benjamin, one of the three seniors on this team. Fields dances down the lane, traveled, I think. Yes. He will turn it over and take us to a timeout. 11-17 to play here in the first half. It is Pittsburgh by three. There to tip off the season as the 2K Sports College Hoops Classic, benefiting coaches versus cancer, returns to the mecca of college hoops, Madison Square Garden. UConn, Kentucky, Memphis, and Oklahoma host the regional rounds and highlight a field of 16 teams battling to advance to the world's most famous arena, November 15th and 16th. Tickets start at just $10 and are available through Ticketmaster.com. Follow all the tournament action at CoachesVersusCancer.com. It's Big East New York College Basketball on SNY. St. John's takes the court as Norm Roberts and the Red Storm get their season started. College Basketball on SNY presented by Infinity. St. Francis versus St. John's Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. on SNY. Are you ready for a one-on-one -on -one with Mike Tannenbaum? Mike will break down every game and look at the week ahead. And he'll answer your questions. First in goal with Mike Tannenbaum, presented by Atlantic Health, Thursdays at 6.30, only on SNY. 11-8 is the lead for the Panthers. And before the season, Jamie Dixon had a chance to talk about the makeup of this year's Panther team. Well, we were smaller. We got depth at the guard, and we, we're going to uh, be inexperienced at the five, uh, except when Terrell's in there, it looks like, and we'll play small. Uh, but I like these guys. I like I like uh, where they've gone from practice one to practice 11. Casson Diggs, our junior college kid, and Dewan Blair. Um, you know, we, we recruited the right guys. I think there's no question. We are back, and what great success he has had. And especially in this building, they are 82 and 8 in this building. They've won 21 in a row against non-conference teams. Bucknell, a couple of years ago, was the alone non-conference team to win a game in this building. So it hasn't happened very often. They simply do not lose in this building. And uh, looking at this building, it's got to be one of the top five buildings in the country. That's a two. Ooh. He was pretty far out. We saw him do it in the ball game yesterday. The big Boot. fella has shown his range. He feels that uh, he, he has the ability to step on the outside and get that shot off. Masked up against Cassim Diggs right now. This is Benjamin. They look inside. Spinning, shooting, too hard. Right back to Biggs. He'll try it again. This one rims off. That follow won't go, but underneath the foul is called. And Just racing in to keep that play alive that time was Gilbert Brown. He got a piece of it and kept it alive. The Panthers will get a chance at the line. But their shooting is really cold so far. Right here, just going after the rebound, keeping the ball alive, and causing the foul right there. The Diggs is 6'10, 240 pounds. He's from Williamsport, Pennsylvania, but came to the Panthers as a junior from Cloud County Junior College. And I like the fact that the Bigs know that they're not going to get a lot of plays being called to them, so they have to get their points in other ways, and that's crashing the offensive rebound. Misses both. Husak has the rebound. Hands it ahead to Polk. And if you're St. Louis, you got to be happy where you're at early in this ball game. And we've got a foul inside. Oh, Going to go on Ronald Ramon, a holding call. Ramon picks up his first foul. It's only the third foul of the first half. Eckerly tried to get the pass, but they come out to Liddell instead. Paul Eckerly, freshman from Washington, Maryland. Panthers with a big rebounding edge so far, but it's pretty much to be expected. Husak is the one who's got to do the job for St. Louis. This is Meyer, goes back inside. And knocked away. Third turnover by the Billikens. Brown on the run, pulls up, goes back to Ramon. Now one of the freshmen, Wanamaker, gets inside. Diggs has it blocked out of bounds. And this is where we'll see you know, when the backup point guards come into the game. Well, it's not the same, really. 
And a nice block without committing the foul. And immediately they go back to the freshman, Dewan Blair. From outside, that's short. Lish battling Blair for the rebound. Wanamaker goes up with it, and it goes. And a nice play by Wanamaker, just going after the offensive rebound, putting his body into the defensive player's body, creating the contact and making the shot. Now Wanamaker is a freshman who's still adjusting. Coaches told me he's got to adjust to the speed of this game. It's a little different from high school basketball. It is a little different, and uh, you do have to catch up to the speed. And sometimes as freshmen, you come in and you try to do things a little too quickly. You want to do things fast, but you don't want to be in a hurry. And uh, right now, he really has to adjust to the pace of the, of the basketball game. And there's the turnover difference so far, an edge to the Panthers. We are just past the midway point. Ronald Ramon is out there. He can run point guard. They've got about four guys that can be either shooting guard or point guard. Very versatile. Any of these guards could set up the offense and run it. But maybe not quite like LeVance Fields, you know? Oh, no. He's the general, and the general leads his basketball team. And uh, when he goes out the game, this is a key component of if there's a level of play that drops when he's off. When That's it's not Ramon's in. favorite shot right there. He squared up for the three, but he missed it. Well, the Panthers shooting woes continue. And you got to credit St. Louis's defense really getting after it on the defensive end. Quick turnaround, bending, bending, good. Nicely done that time by Eberhard. And he's been the story offensively so far. He's the man down low. He gets the ball. He's very patient. He really looks at the defense. If there's a double team, he makes the pass out. But if he's one on one, he has the light to go to the basket and make some very nice moves inside. Panthers shooting only 33% so far. Ramon working hard against Eckerly. Great defense by St. Louis. That's too strong. Eckerly on the weak side has the rebound of the miss by Biggs. And a lot of shots the Panthers are taking aren't from guys that they want shooting the ball from the outside. So uh, really have to start executing their offense and field to set to come back into the game next to that ball. Yeah, three starters are set to return for the Panthers. Eckerly underneath cut off by Brown. Lish has not taken a shot so far. And I really believe he does have to be a little more aggressive. Shot clock inside 10 again. Lish tried to power his way in and turns it over. Tried to force his way down inside, could not get there. It's the Panthers by one early on. We're still in the first half. We've had one tie. The Billikens have never led. It's the Panthers by one. And the coaches haven't been very good at preseason predictions as far as picking winners in the conference, but this is the way it stacks up with Pittsburgh, the fourth pick. Actually, a tie for the top spot between Georgetown and Louisville, and both those teams should be outstanding. Oh, they're going to be great. Georgetown with Hibbert coming back, they're going to be definitely up there at the top of the Big East. I think Louisville, with seven guys returning, are really going to be right there in the end. But um, from 3 to 12, any of these teams could really win. So every night is going to be a tough night in the Big East. Starters are back out there for the Panthers of Pittsburgh. Fields, Cook, Young, Blair. And, of course, Ramon. Nice heads by, by the big fella, House. They get it inside to Blair. He's going to put up a baseline shot and drill it. And a good-looking shot by Blair. He has that ability to step out to 10 feet and knock that jump shot down. He's, they say he's one of the hardest-working guys. Uh, comes to practice. He's the first one there every day, and uh, you can really tell he works extremely hard. Well, he said, we looked at some film of him last year playing high school. He couldn't believe how big he looked. He's lost about 35 pounds. He was over 300 wow. when he played for Shenley High School. And he's still huge. They like to compare him to Sam Clancy. The next Pitt Panther. That's a pretty good man to compare him to. He turned it over. So I'm spin that time, and as he backed up, he got a little too much palm on it. We are at the Peterson Event Center on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh. I'm John Sanders, along with Eric Murdoch, 20th ranked Panthers, taking on the Billikens from St. Louis. Billikens now in the Atlantic 10. As Eric mentioned, they won 20 games a year ago. A couple of games in the postseason tournament, but. No NCAA or NIT. And one of the things we'll be talking about is almost a steal. Lish comes up with it. Leans up. Bending, bending, bending. Uh, oh. <laughs> and maybe this would get Lish off. Uh, it's been uh, not aggressive going to the basket, but right here, uh, off the almost still, Lish gets the ball. Nice little pump fake. Takes the hit. 
and he's able to finish. But um, he needs to be a little more aggressive offensively, not just creating for himself, but also creating for his teammates. And he gets the roll on the free throw as well. So a three-point play and brings us to a 15-15 ball game. The Panthers with their starters back out there. And Young is in backcourt. Second time we've been tied. We were tied at four. Now tied at 15. And six and a half minutes for me. And the Panthers just a little out of sync offensively. I think early in the season, uh, your offense really has to catch up to your defense. They play great defense, but right now the execution is not as solid as they would like. So Blair uses the glass, comes up short. Robert Ramon with a put back. Nice play by Ramon, just getting active on the offensive boards and uh, putting the layup back in. He has two two-point field goals. That's unusual for him. That is unusual, and right now I'm sure he's saying the same thing. A prolific three-point shooter for this basketball team. Meyer thought about a three. Instead gives it up to Eberhardt. He's been terrific. He'll start a drive and then throws it away. Was it deflected? Yes. It was deflected. So to stay at this end, this game is being produced and distributed by ESPN Regional Television Incorporated. Eight on the shot clock. And Majerus didn't say a word in the game yesterday, but he is up and talking right now to one of our officials. That is the referee for tonight's game. Wally Rutke, John Cowell, Mike Kitts are the other two officials. And point of emphasis this year, and we saw it in the game one here today, is coaches staying in that box. And then bench decorum. They're not the same thing. Lish for three. Comes up short. Rebound brought out of there by LeVance Field. Field with a runner. Off the glass. Oh, good. Second one of those we've seen tonight. Terrific. And if you're Pittsburgh, this is what you want to do. You want to grab the rebound and take it coast to coast, meaning you want to be a little more aggressive and, cre and create a more up-tempo style. And that was a great, great job by Phillips right there, able to finish the quarter basket. And the other thing that does, it really gets these fans into the ball game. Nice spin move by Meyer, but his shot was too strong. And we're going to go the other way, because that foul is going to go on Eberhardt. And you're right about getting the fans involved. I think this team really feeds off the fact that the crowd gets involved. They're on top of the court, and uh, they just want to see guys out there hustling, you know, with a lot of energy. And, um, you know, plays like that will get them started. Panthers leading by four. They've been up by as many as five. And the guy that's leading the way, really, with the ball and scoring as well is LeVance Field. Just making some great decisions right here, running pick and roll, finds his big rolling to the basket right here runner every guy every guard should have that type of shot in this game and right here with the crossover between the legs pulled up for the three he also wanted to foul on that but he'll take the three point shot and so far he's leading the scoring for the Panthers early on with seven Ramon has four and just always under control this kid never seems to get rattled never seems to get uh, over anxious as he's going to come down. He's going to run the team and uh, very smooth very poised in, in difficult situations Benjamin has taken Ramon's spot in the lineup as Ramon has a couple of early fouls Panthers have committed three two for the Billikens and there you see it set play for Cook Cook works it inside gets the roll very nice coming off that stagger screen Cook gets the ball and takes it to the hole and uh, just a nice read coming off those screens. Cook the fifth year senior who transferred from East Carolina. It was Liddell down the lane with the left hand lays it in. Very nice. Very nice move with the hesitation and Liddell is a, is a very good player. He can do it all. He can shoot the ball and as you saw right there he can put it on the floor and create his own shot. Benjamin a little stop and go move but they swing it around the perimeter. Here's Cook. Here comes Young into the lane. This is the shot. Rebound lost by the Billiken. Everhart had it but could not hang on. It goes out of bounds. And Mike Kitts lets us know it's going to stay at this end of the court with a fresh clock for the Panthers. Benjamin lost control of it or had it knocked away. And here comes St. Louis. Everhart out in front of the pack jams at home. And a nice find by Polk. 
dribbling with his head up. Sees Eberhardt breaking through the basket and nice delivery for the dunk. And Jamie Dixon not happy about that. He's going to call a timeout with a two point lead right now. And if you're St. Louis, you got to be happy how you're playing defensively. They're really getting after it, keeping guys out of the middle. And um, when you can do that, you get those guys to take shots that they really don't want to take. It's just a solid job defensively. And uh, that's what Coach Majera said. These guys are going to play a half court man to man. They're going to be aggressive with it. And what I like about this team is that they're not intimidated. You know, Pitt has a very good non-conference record against opponents and uh, these guys are coming in and they're just letting it all hang out. They're playing very well. I, I mentioned that bench decorum because coach Ron Cottrell of the Houston Baptist team was ejected five and a half minutes into the first half <laughs> by the refereeing crew because he was chirping away. He was seated. He was not out of the coach's box but they did not like what he was saying. He got one technical. He didn't stop talking. He got a second and was sent to this locker room. Yeah, and that's the point of em emphasis. They do not want any foul language out there. They don't want you going after the referees. And uh, if you give them a little too much lit, they're going to send you out of here. And uh, coaches really have to be careful. And I think they do have to work at it in practice. Nice move that time by Blair to get his second field goal. And he earned that one. And Blair's a wide body inside. Just a nice little jump hook in the middle. When he's one on one, he really has to go to work in there. Very highly touted freshman coming in. Polk against Fields. This is Lish. Nice hedge. Now both these teams can play some defense. Oh, that's their staple. They're going to play aggressive defense. And right here, you see Cook keeping Liddell out of the middle. They know if the ball gets into the middle, it's going to break down their defense. Lish to three. That misses and goes into the hands of the Panthers. And just a great defensive possession by Pitt. Well, he learned that defense, did Jamie Dixon. From the man on the other sideline, Rick Majerus. They're very good friends. They've known each other for many years. And, uh, Coach Dixon says that he's adopted a lot of Coach Majerus' philosophy as far as defense and ball moving on offense. Benjamin too strong. Everhard with the board gets it ahead to Polk. And the Panthers with just three fouls in the first half. St. Louis has committed only two. Panthers also only three turnovers. Liddell from outside bending off in the rebound. Slips out of the hands of Blair and goes into the hands of Cook. Well, the Panthers with about two and a half left in the opening half. Cook has been trying to work and set other people up. Again, Blair working down low, uses that wide body, gets his six point. And very patient for a freshman inside. He goes in with the pump fake, doesn't rush himself, takes his time, and Puts the ball in, and I thought he got hit on the on the layup, but didn't get the call. But a good-looking freshman is this Blair. He had 20 points in his first college game, and 14 rebounds. Both he and Young averaging a double-double. And there's the long arm <laughs> of Blair, but he gives it right back. Everhard reacted, came back, got the basketball back for the Billikens with a fresh clock. Inside, two minutes to play in the opening half. In the final game of this. Hispanic College Fund Challenge is sponsored by Nemecolin Woodlands Resort. Second year in a row, the Panthers have hosted this kind of tournament. And their plus for these teams is they get to play three games in three days, but it only counts as one game played as far as towards your total number of games allowed. And Liddell working hard. In the shot clock at five as Meyer shoots from outside. Lish tracks it down. Billikens maintain control. And the defense for both teams has been great. No penetration, no easy baskets, and uh, this is what we expected coming into this to this meeting. A minute to go. Liddell holds it, and the shot clock's going to go down inside 10 again. Eberhard, Lish against Benjamin. Gets all the way inside and has it blocked. That was... Sam Young with the rejection. Here's Benjamin flying down the court using the glass. No good oh. by Blair. Oh. The wild player oh. with the ball. Young fella, don't show it all to me right now. We got a long season to go, but that shows his athleticism. He's a guy that's going to eat the boards up off the glass, and uh, a lot of plays aren't going to be run for him, and that's where he can score baskets. But uh, what a great follow. Biggest lead of the half for the Panthers. 
As we're in the final 15 seconds. Second time Pitt has had a 6-0 run here in the first 20 minutes. Now the shot clock is at five. About a one second difference. Liddell will shoot and hit. And Liddell answers his second field goal of the half. And the Panthers will go to halftime with a 27 to 21 lead. And some great spurt right at the end of the half by Blair, I thought. Well, Blair is a guy that uh, he showed me a lot today, just being patient inside when he's one on one, having the patience to take his time and go up for the basket. But uh, just right. a good looking freshman right there. We are at halftime. We're talk about some big changes coming to the Big East Conference, especially the postseason tournament. That's all straight ahead when we bring you our Big East Wire. 20th ranked Pittsburgh trying to make it 22 straight wins over non conference foes at home, and they do have the halftime lead over St. Louis as we welcome you back to our Big East halftime report along with Eric Murdoch. I'm John Sanders. Let's get right to some of those highlights in the first half because uh, the field, the uh, Levance Fields, led the highlights for Pitt. He did, and uh, with his head, uh, head always up, looking up right there with the alley oop to Sam Young, and right here making a great decision off the pick and roll, dropping it down to Biggs, and right here. Fields is really showing you that he's from Brooklyn, New York, with the shake and bake and the pull up three. Just a great guy to lead a basketball team and a guy that who's a winner. Well, he's the reason they're ahead. And Husak got the start, and kind of a surprise start because he played so well on Saturday. That was his only basket. Lish right on the spot to pick up the loose ball and finally got himself on the scorecard. And Lish really has to be aggressive going to the basket. I think uh, he's a guy that can shoot. He's a guy that can really put the ball on the floor and create his own shot. But uh, I thought St. Louis did a great job defensively. And right here, Blair with the follow up. I thought he was a star in the first half. He certainly was a big star in that first half. We'll be checking out some of those stats from the opening 20 minutes. Both teams are back on the court. And we'll have more basketball coming up from Pittsburgh as we continue with our Big East matchup against the A-10. Is back. Complete a great Thanksgiving weekend by experiencing the fun and excitement of the inaugural Legends Classic, one of college basketball's premier season opening tournaments. Come see New Mexico State, Tennessee, Texas, and West Virginia compete in the first college basketball tournament at the brand new Prudential Center in North New Jersey on November 23rd and 24th. Tickets start at just $12 and are available through Ticketmaster.com. Follow all the tournament action at LegendsClassic.com. I played in stadiums like this for 20 years. The games, the fans, man, I loved it. This stadium holds up to 40,000. From the box seats to the grandstand to way out here. Fill it five times, that's up to 200,000 people. That's about how many people die each year in the US from complications of deep vein thrombosis, a blood clot that forms in your leg, which may move to your lungs where it could be fatal. Complications from DVT blood clots kill more people each year than breast cancer and AIDS combined. And it's not just something pro athletes need to worry about. If you know the risk, you can take steps to prevent it. Mine was discovered in time. Will yours be? Talk to your doctor and visit dvt.net. For more information, call 1-800-933-3200 or visit dvt.net, a public service of the American Venus Forum Foundation. It's 27-21. Let's ch quickly check out some of the uh, stats from the opening 20 minutes of play. Field goal shooting, not especially good either way. Offensive rebounds, a big edge for Pitt. And you can say Blair was a big part of that. Turnover advantage also to the University of Pittsburgh. But we've got 20 minutes to go. Now, this tournament has featured blowouts in almost every game. Yeah, I haven't seen any close ones. And uh... this might be a little different here this, this evening. Fields off the Blair screen, puts up a jumper, bending short. And the rebound by Liddell. You gotta love when Juwan Blair steps out and set a screen for you. He palmed it. It was a point of emphasis a couple of years ago, but they still do it and get away with it, don't they? They do, and uh, it's a great move if you can get away with it, but that is a point of emph emphasis that they've continued throughout the years. And Lish, Fields, Fields had the better of it in the first half. Only that one short basket followed by a free throw for Lish. Here's Cook. He was kind of quiet in the first half. Had only two points. Underneath, up and in by 
Sam Young, who was also quiet, averaging 23 points a game in the first two, has just four tonight. But the Panthers open up an eight-point lead, matching their biggest lead of the ball game. And maybe that will get Sam Young going. He's a guy that's very active, and uh, I think once he gets a couple baskets, he gains a lot of confidence. Let's see if he can build on that. Everhard trying to work him over along that baseline. Meyer drops it inside to Liddell. Backing fields down and stepping in and hitting the basket, it will count. And a very nice play by Liddell, knowing that he has the smaller fields on him, really taking his time, clearing everybody out and uh, putting the ball back in the basket. Right here, fields a smaller defender on him. Right there, Sam Young, I believe, steps in his hand and for the for the foul in the basket. So the second old fashioned three point play completed. And Liddell has not missed a free throw in this young season, hasn't shot very many. It's the first foul on Sam Young. And Liddell is very patient in the offense. He has a lot of offensive skills, but he really gets his points within the in the realm of the offense. Cook works inside, puts it up at short. Tried to get it back and went over the back. So Cook will pick up his first foul. And it looks like Pitt is making a conscious effort to get the ball inside. Usually they're motion offense with body movement and ball movement. Right now, making a conscious effort to get the ball inside. Our game is being produced and distributed by ESPN Regional Television Incorporated. Liddell works on fields. And there's the versatility of Liddell bringing the ball up against fields. This is Lish against Ramon. Eberhard, who's had a good first half with 10 points, to lead the scoring for his team. Oh, the big guy's open. Husek wants the ball inside. Had great position, but they missed him. That's a three. The left-hand three-pointer by Luke Meyer. And, sl and slowly but surely, the Billikens are gaining confidence. You can see it in their play. Guys are slapping the floor. Well, we're here at the Peterson Event Center. I'm John Sanders along with Eric Murdoch, number 20 pip, taking on the Billikens of St. Louis. We've got a foul before the shot. And if you're Coach Majerus, you're right where you want to be in this building. Let's face it, Pitt does not lose in this building. But right now, two-point game, and they're playing solid defensively and really shutting down the scores of the Panthers. Just over two minutes gone in this second half. St. Louis has never had the lead. Juan Blair powers his way inside. I tell you, he used that wide body, didn't he? And that's a good play by the big fella, really using his body, and he has the strength to really move a guy that's seven feet and a uh, couple dribbles, and uh, he moved Husek right out the way. Almost a steal for Pittsburgh. Eberhard right there on the weak side with the follow, and he's got a dozen points to lead all scores. He's been solid. He's been solid on the offensive rebounds. He's been solid when he's get, got the ball in the post and uh, very patient down there. Young for three. Sam Young is now five of seven shooting three-pointers, and he's stepping it up so far here in the second half, 34-29 Pittsburgh. It's amazing what a couple layups will do for your confidence. You make a couple layups, now you get on the perimeter. It makes that shot a lot easier. Eberhard waits for Lish. Liddell against Fields. This is Meyer. Liddell along the baseline. Will he back him down again? Same play. He got a little weak side help from Sam Young that time. Lish for three from the corner. Got it. Nice shot by Lish, but Eberhard in that situation, you really don't want to come over there by Liddell to bring your man. That's why. Liddell had to pass the ball out, but a great shot by Lish in the corner. Lish is four for eight shooting three-pointers on the young season, 50% average. Here's Cook between the legs. Fade away. Good. Nice play by Cook. Just a one-on-one -on -one move within the offense, and he has that ability. He's a slasher to the basket, and a very nice mid-range game. Four-point edge for the Panthers. They were up by six at halftime. Their biggest lead has been eight, and again, it's Liddell. He turns it over. I mean, we've had that called three times, I think, already. And I believe two of them are on Liddell. Really has to keep that hand from going under the basketball. I know Allen Iverson has made that that carry famous, but uh, really got to be conscious of that, keeping and your hand from under the basketball. Well, Liddell will set. John Cowell, one of the officials, had a little word with Liddell before he sat down. Well, he's doing a little coaching over there. He's coaching him. He's, he's teaching him how to dribble. And uh, he knows he doesn't want to call that every time down the floor. Here comes Fields, hanging and hitting. Levance Fields, a very athletic move. The basket will count. 
And the foul goes against Dwayne Polk. So the third time we've seen that kind of penetration and finish from Levance Fields. Very athletic shot, then it goes. team has scored 11 points so far in the second half, and the key offensive player for the Billings has been the transfer from Coffeyville Junior College, Barry Eberhardt. And Eberhardt just being in the right place at the right time. Nice little, little dish from Liddell, and right here, the big fella running the floor for the powerful dunk. And right here, just being at the right place at the right time, not going to get a lot of plays called for you, but if you, you get your points on the offensive rebound, a solid performance by Barry Eberhardt. And it'll be Fields to the line. Levance leading the, the way for his team. He has nine points in the game, looking for number 10. That'll match the total by Dewan Blair. And he doesn't get the roll. So a miss at the line, and it remains a six-point game. Panthers have not hit a free throw tonight. They're shooting pretty good as a team. So over the years, Eric, that was a problem for them. But they're 0 for 3 in this game tonight. You don't want that problem to creep back in into it. I think free throw shooting is very mental, and it's hard to get over that mental mentality when you're having a tough time at the line. And the other time, the thing about that, it can hurt you at the end of the year when you get into March. Definitely, because a lot of those games are going to be very close. Runner by Polk. Young the rebound. They push it ahead. Cook pulls up for the jumper, bending short to Meyer the rebound. Jamie Dixon not very happy with that quick shot. Guys weren't in position for the offensive rebound, and uh, that's not their game right there. Eckerly in the lineup again. Gets it to Lish. And Polk, a nice feed from Lish. And a nice play by Polk. Had Levansville thinking he was going to pop out to the top and just made a little curl, got a nice feed in, in, in for the layup. His first basket of the night. Makes it a 38-34 game. And we've got some action inside. Looks like it's going to go against... Uh, yeah, it's going to go against St. Louis. And right here, Polk, having Phil's thinking he's going to pop out to the top, makes a little curl to the basket. There's no weak side help right there for the little layup in the dish. Benjamin is checked back in for Pittsburgh, and the foul went on uh, Nolmeyer, who's playing in the game for the first time, and there comes Fields again. That time going to the left hand. Levance now with 11 to lead the scoring for his team. And just very aggressive. I think he really has to become offensive minded. When a point guard sees that his team is not executing very well on offense, he really has to take it upon himself to uh, create shots for his teammates. And that's what he's doing. Deflected, but Lish keeps it alive. Meyer on a drive. Tried to make the feed, does to the corner. The three is good. Off the bench, first basket tonight for Paul Eckerley, a freshman from Washington, Missouri. And Eckerley, nice looking shot from the corner. And uh, if you look up, it's a three point game. St. Louis really playing tough. Eckerley averaged 25 points a game in high school. He's played well so far. Had 11 in the game yesterday, did not score in the game on Friday. Young tries to answer, bending, bending off. No good. And Lish will start back. A break opportunity and a bump and a foul. And that will go against the Panthers. Sam Young. And a smart play by Kevin Lynch. is really using his body to shield off Sam Young, creating the contact. Right here, coming down, really using his body, creating the contact. And when you're running like that and you're side by side, usually they're going to call it on the defender. And that's exactly what happened. Lish is just a solid player. He can do it all for this basketball team, and uh, he doesn't go outside the offense. All of his offense is going to come within the scheme of the, of the Young system. with a steal. Look out now. And a foul. So Sam Young answers at the other end. Just great anticipation by Sam Young, and that's what he does. He's an athlete, and he wants to deny on the wings. And right here, great denial of the basketball. Very strong body. Right there, takes the hit and, and is able to finish. I mean, if you look at this guy, he's, he's very cut. Looks like he's not just in the gym, that he's, he, he's eating those weights. I'll tell you what, it looked like Luke fouled him a couple of times. Once when he made the steal and once when he made the basket. And he comes up short. Panthers have still not made a free throw. Wow, it's unbelievable. Five-point lead, though, 42-37. Eckerly with it. Liddell. 
A lot of weak side action for the Billikens. A lot of screening on the opposite side of the floor. It makes it tough to defend. Shot clock again at 10. High pick and roll. And Odell finally has to go back in the shot clock violation. That's the defense we were talking about coming in. Very solid on the half court. These guys are not going to allow a lot of penetration in the middle. Everyone's solid keeping their man in front. And when you do that, they have to end up taking a bailout shot on the three-point perimeter. Polk will check back in as Lish sits down for St. Louis. The Billikens have never led. We've had about three ties in the ballgame, but no leads for St. Louis. This is Benjamin against Eckerly. Now Fields, he's been the story for the Panthers throughout the night. Levance has it, shot clock at 15. Game clock at 12.25, time remaining. Here's Fields again, on a drive. And the foul. Oh, it's called an offensive yes, foul. Yes, they did call an offensive foul. Oh. It's the first on Levance Fields. Fans were not happy about that. Our game is being produced and distributed by ESPN Regional Television Incorporated. Fifth turnover by Pitt. They've taken good care of the basketball, but they're very much in a game. Relford in the ball game for St. Louis for the first time, and he'll shoot. Benjamin, oh. oh, two men there. Blair and Benjamin both, and they couldn't hang on. Actually, they had three guys there, because Fields was there as well. But it will be St. Louis ball, trailing by five when we return to the Peterson Event Center. Experience is an excellent teacher. And what over 45 years of experience has taught Oppenheimer Funds is the strength of a balanced approach and the effectiveness of a diversely skilled team. Valuable lessons that guide us through an ever-changing financial landscape. Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. Carefully consider fund investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses. Call your advisor for a prospectus with this and other fund information. Read it carefully before investing. <clears throat> hey. oh, I, I think this thing's broken. It just it won't, it won't slide. I, I, actually, I think you... <laughs> you can't always be smooth, but your beer should be. With a specially lined can to seal in the taste, Keystone Light is always smooth, even when you're not. You know what? You should put a sign on that door. What door? The cooler door. Oh! College basketball is back. Be there to tip off the season as the 2K Sports College Hoops Classic, benefiting coaches versus cancer, returns to the mecca of college hoops, Madison Square Garden. UConn, Kentucky, Memphis, and Oklahoma host the regional rounds and highlight a field of 16 teams battling to advance to the world's most famous arena, November 15th and 16th. Tickets start at just $10 and are available through Ticketmaster.com. Follow all the tournament action at CoachesVersusCancer.com. K&G wants you to look your best this holiday season. So right now, you'll find select men's suits, two for just $150, and select designer label suits, two for just $300. Celebrate in style with K&G. K&G Fashion Superstore. For men, for women, for less. K&G wants you to look your best this holiday season. So right now, you'll find select lady suits, two for just $90, and select designer label suits, two for just $180. Celebrate in style with K&G. K&G Fashion Superstore. For men, for women, for less. A little over eight minutes gone here in the second half. I'm John Sanders with Eric Murdoch. Takes you back to January of 1991. Much younger looking Eric Murdoch. Oh, look at that high top fade. <laughs> anyway, this was a great game. Eric Bar or Rick Barnes was your coach. And you scored 48 points against Pitt. That's the most that any one player has ever scored against him. That must be a night to remember. It was a night to remember. And you hear guys like Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant talk about being in the zone. And uh, that was one of those zones that I was in where anything I threw up went in the basket. Well, it was still the most points scored by a player in a Big East game as well. So you're in the record books. Third all-time leading scorer at PC. He traveled. He kind of lost his balance, it looked like, and he took the extra step. And there he is. <laughs> he has less hair, but 
Look you at know, that. Third all time leading scorer. You knew that. You Jimmy know you're Walker's getting old when you look at old footage and you say, man, those shorts were tight. I had the John <laughs> Stockton's on. <laughs> Not like they were today. And that next year I was drafted by the Utah Jazz and played with John Stockton. And uh, I tried to change him to some bigger shorts and he wanted no part of that. <laughs> well, Everhart commits his second foul. It's a non shooting foul. Four team fouls now on St. Louis. Five on the Panthers who have the ball and the lead by five. Mansfield's getting a little blow right now because Benjamin and Ramon are on and Ramon will run the point. And that shows the versatility of a Ramon play the one and the two position. Inside Blair starts a move spins off the glass too hard and a rebound underneath brought out of there by Liddell back come the Billiken. Wanted to shoot that one, didn't he? And look at Blair. He did. It was a great dribble drive. Gilbert Brown on a drive draws the foul. No basket. It'll be before the shot. And it's foul number two on Dwayne Polk. Take us to a timeout. As checking back into the lineup is Luke Meyer. The Panthers are still in front. Billikens hanging around, though. Stay with us. We'll be back to the Peterson Center. Welcome to the new shape of fast. Introducing the new Pontiac G6 GXP Street Edition. Pontiac, designed for action. Okay, listen up people, I'm talking to you, fans, coaches, and players. It's been brought to my attention that not all of you have been displaying good sportsmanship. I simply will not tolerate taunting, name calling, cursing, or any behavior that shows a lack of respect. I want you to act with class and dignity at all times. After all, kids do look up to you. You're role models. Now let's get out there and show them how it's done. Have you ever led an expedition? Have you ever been honored by the Louvre? Do you Have you ever protected nobility? Have you ever seen the curvature of the earth? Range Rover, designed for the extraordinary. Turn up the volume on Jets Open Mic, presented by Motorola. SNY brings Eric Mangini into your house. It's got to be consistent. It's got to be consistent throughout four quarters. SNY puts you in the front row for Coach Mangini's press conferences at Hofstra. No game comes down to one catch. No game comes down to one play. You won't miss a word. I like it. Making progress. You won't miss a thing. Jets Open Mic, presented by Motorola, Mondays and Wednesdays at 4.30 p.m., only on SNY. Get your New York sports here. Now the Oakland Zoo is ready for basketball season. Hoping their Panthers can go 3-0, a five-point lead right now. How tough a place is this to play? Well, let's ask one of the top players in the league, Wemi Efajuku, what he thinks about this building. Pittsburgh is tough. Pittsburgh is tough. Their fans are serious. They're, they have great energy. Their players feed off of it. Louisville is tough as well, but Pitt, Something about Pitt that just makes it a uh, tough place to play. Tough place to play when they've got good players, too, right? <laughs> Very tough, and with the defense that they play, it makes it even tougher. Double screen set that time for Ronald Ramon. 10 45 remaining here in the second half. And they have just not been able to pull away. The biggest lead the Panthers have had and a couple times has been eight points. Billikens have never led. Brown gives it back to Ramon. He goes down the lane, dishes it off, and up and in. And that's not Ramon's game, really penetrating, getting into the middle, but right there, able to penetrate the defense and find the big fella bigs for a layup. And somebody has lost a shoe out there, threw it to the coach. <laughs> they wanted to call it. Well, they tried to call a 20-second timeout. And right here, Ramon, with the great penetration, able to dish it off to bigs for the easy lay-in. 
But he lost, lost his shoe when he came down. <laughs> lost his shoe, won the call the 20 second timeout. It's amazing to me, all the straps and <laughs> laces and everything else they have on those shoes. How do they keep falling off? How do they come up? I don't know. They got straps and I know it. they tie them tight. They got ankle braces. Maybe it's the ankle braces. Uh, right now, this, it looks like it's a little fatter in that shoe and it's a little more easy to come off. Well, Biggs is going to come out of the lineup. Panthers apply a little pressure. Benjamin on Dwayne Polk. This is Lish. He's been fairly quiet. He has one three-pointer and a total of six in the game. Nice screen. Oh, good, nice good movement by Polk, too, to get himself inside, get away from the defender, and get himself open. And this St. Louis team is really setting some great screens right there. I think that was Mueller setting the back screen for Polk, and uh, nice cut to the basket and good delivery on the pass. Lish, good defender, is out on Ronald Ramon. And this is a crucial time for Pitt with Ramon running the point. Let's see if they can execute their offense. Brown for three. Got it. And again, a little penetration by Ramon running the offense. Brown coming off the screen. Ramon hitting him on time and a nice shot by Brown. Back to that eight point lead for Brown, his second three pointer of the season. A guy that missed last year with injuries, also had some shoulder problems in preseason. The Panthers are pretty deep. They're not afraid to go nine, ten guys. And very versatile. That'll be a grab on Brown. Actually, Liddell did have just a step, and he reached out with his arm instead of his body. He did. And uh, if he was able to get in position to where Liddell runs through his body, he would have got that charge call, but just a little reach in at the end. Well, Levance Fields comes back on as Benjamin goes to the bench. Panthers leading 47 39. And an important possession for St. Louis right here. They really need the basket. Don't want this lead to get stretched out any further. And try to stay away from a double digit lead, which the Panthers have not had tonight. That's Liddell to Meyer. Now Lish on Ramon. And Ramon right here, the best defensive player for the Panthers on Lish. Get some help from Blair. And the shot clock at five. Liddell for three. No good. Battle for the rebound. Won by Sam Young. Here comes Levance Field. Mm. He can dribble a little bit. Huh? <laughs> it's like he has the ball on a string. He has what they call in New York crazy handles. Inside power move, Blair. There's the big fella. They can't guard the big fella in there one-on-one. -on -one. He gets the ball. He's going to use that wide body to create space. And right there, a nice jump hook over the left shoulder. It's a dozen for him, and the lead does grow to 10. First double-digit lead of the night. Meyer tries to drive on Young, can't do it. Goes back to Eberhardt. They've slowed him down a little bit. And he threw it over his coach's head and out of bounds. And that's what happens. The defense kind of wears on you, and uh, they don't... They don't like the pressure. It's a 10 point Panther lead. And watch the strength of the freshman from the Pittsburgh City League High School of Shenley. He's doing the thing for the Panthers. At Michelin, our tires are rigorously tested. They're laser checked, x rayed for structural integrity. And finally, no tire leaves the factory without a thorough hand inspection. A better way forward. And I don't know. Is this the part where you let go? Is this the part where you find out? When it's people who do the right thing, they call it being responsible. When it's a car insurance company, they call it Liberty Mutual. Responsibility. What's your policy? Liberty Mutual. And the breakaway, nobody back. That's an easy two. Syracuse leads by five. SNY covers key Big East matchups. He goes in for the dunk. Number one. Number one, number one, number one. Number two. Number two, 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 two. It's giving New York sports fans some real together time. That was harsh. 
SNY, the best of the Big East, and more. It's the New York sports here. Climb through the ropes and get in the ring. Because SNY Sunday Night Fights is your weekly main event in the city that refuses to sleep. Landing every jab, uppercut, knockout, and body blow. The contenders for sweet science glory step onto the canvas. And SNY is your ringside seat to see who will stand at the end. SNY Sunday Night Fights, tonight at 8, only on Sportsnet New York. Get your New York sports here. First double-digit lead of the night, just inside eight minutes to play in the second half. John Sanders with Eric Murdoch. We took you back to 1991, and Eric was part of a great night against the Panthers when he scored 48. Let's go back to this play. Oh, oh, oh This was in 1988. Oh, man, Jerome Lane, and uh, I, I kid Paco to this day about getting dunked on. I think right now he's still picking glass out of his hair, but uh, just an unbelievable night, and uh, Jerome Lane was a tough basketball player. Um, they have a tradition of great big men coming out of Pittsburgh, and he's uh, definitely one of them. How about that team of Smith and Lane on the same team? That was uh, pretty good. Wasn't we it? definitely <laughs> did not stop them. We had to double team them, and that still didn't work. Take a look at our stat track. Sorry about that, Paco. <laughs> well, you said you were going to get him. <laughs> Shooting in the second half, inside. Big fella. Again. 14 I, points for the freshman from I, Kenley. I love this freshman. He's out there. He's playing like a, a veteran. He's out there using his body. And uh, what I really like about him is the confidence. He's out there like he knows he belongs. And um, his work ethics is, is second to none. He almost set up a steal right there with a the deflection. But Polk keeps it alive for the Billikens. You need to make a move. 7-0 run for Pittsburgh. Here's Lick. Around Brown, Liddell from long range, bending short, rebound, scramble, and a foul. And that's going to go, I believe, on Meyer. And if it is Meyer, it'll be his third. And, and that's what Pittsburgh do. Uh, they don't extend their defense. They don't put their team at a disadvantage defensively. They play solid defense. They keep people out of the middle, and there's no penetration. So great defense by Pittsburgh, and they finish it off with a rebound. Panthers still have not made a free throw tonight. There it is. Sam will get himself into double figures. Violation. So just one. 52-39. The lead is 13. Biggest lead of the night. Panthers had an eight-point lead in the first half, led by six at intermission. And Pitt has not turned the ball over in this basketball game. I think if you're St. Louis at this junction in the game, you're really going to have to pick up the tempo defensively to try to cause some turnovers. Now, neither team likes to press. Everhard to Pulse. Again, the shot clock inside 10. Great defense. Meyer for three. Yes. And Meyer, Meyer's second three-pointer. Meyer stepping out to the three-point line, and uh, after a great defensive effort, effort by Pittsburgh, not being able to close out on Meyer. Nice-looking stroke. Now that ends a three-and-a-half-minute route for the Billikens. Cuts the lead back to 10. 52-42. And that was a huge basket. And that's the Panthers. They don't mind taking some time off the clock. They don't. And this is all in the form oh, of their offense. comes Fields again. Sets up Brown for three. Yes, sir. Second one tonight for Gilbert Brown, the redshirt freshman from Harrisburg in a 20-second timeout called by Majerus and the Billikens. Well, the Panthers picking it up. <laughs> well, let's take a look now at our game-changing performance. It's brought to you by Pontiac. And the game-changing performance has to be the freshman, Dewan Blair. And DeJuan Blair is simply a man inside. He has the ability to step outside. He has the ability to crash the re rebound for the follow-up dunk. And he's just a wide body inside. Right here, patience inside. Backs the big fella down. And nice turn over the left shoulder for the jump hook. And right here, just simply using his muscle, using his power to create easy shots for himself in the paint. And he came on right at the end of the first half. And he's also picked him up here in the second half. DeJuan Blair had eight points in the first half. He had 14 points all together in the game. 
and I have a feeling that Aaron Gray is not going to be missed too much here in Pittsburgh. He has seven rebounds. He's averaging a double double in the first two games. But it is so early in the season. And as Jamie Dixon told us, everything will change when we get into Biggie's play. And that one is good from the side. Again, nice looking jump shot within the offense, a little penetrating and kicking. And uh, that's what you have to do. You got to break this defense down of Pittsburgh, who is so tough. And when you get open looks, you really have to take it and take it with confidence. Now they had six players in double figures yesterday in the victory that they had against Houston Baptist. And they've got two players in double figures today. Fields from the foul line. Good. Wow. And Biggs with a great pick. I mean, there was nobody within 15 feet of Fields because Biggs set a great screen on the elbow. Panthers have three players in double figures tonight. Sam Young, Dewan Blair, Levant Fields. There's an offensive foul. Also, offensive foul, but I think it's a good play trying to penetrate that defense. Here we are at the Peterson Event Center on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh. I'm John Sanders along with Eric Murdoch, 20th ranked Panthers, trying to handle the Billikens and go to 3 0, but those kind of starts, nothing new for them. Uh, they have started with victories, 10 0 starts at least in the past three seasons a 10 0, a 15, 18 0, and a 15 0. They simply do not lose to non conference opponents. You come in here to Pittsburgh. Normally you're going to get beat and I think uh, St. Louis can take away from this game that uh, this this is one of the better teams in the Big East and uh, you just have to learn from this experience. There is plenty of Big East experience in the assistant coaching ranks on these two teams. You have Paul Biancardi who is a head coach at Wright State. LaVance Fields again. Ooh, yes sir. Yes sir. I love LaVance Fields. This guy plays with a tremendous amount of confidence. He has all the moves and he has a, a jump shot that you really have to respect. So there's no easy facet in guarding the Vance Phillips. Inside. Cusack missed the shot and a rebound snatched out of there by Tyrell Biggs. Fields back quickly. Tom Harrion is new to the staff, replacing Mike Rice, who moved to Duquesne. And he has Big East coaching experience at Providence College. Vance Fields has made seven of eight shots. And one of them a three pointer. And all within the offense. This is where he's so tough. On the run. Too strong. Liddell the rebound on the weak side. He'll hustle back. Eckerly with a shot and a score. He's a scorer. Average 25 a game in high school. He's a scorer, and right there he was open for the three-point shot. Liddell held it a little bit too long. Defense recovered. He had to put it on the floor for a nice-looking dribble jump shot. Clock in the Panthers' favor now as they still lead it by 13. This is Blair. <laughs> he, hit, he hit the other guy in the head. He hit <laughs> Relford in the head with a pass. He wants to show all of his skills tonight. He's already showed that he has the ability to score in, in every kind of way. Right there, he wanted to show that he could pass the basketball. I'll tell you what, Kushak was not as big a factor at all tonight compared to what he was yesterday. And there is a two for Lish. Lish with eight points, the junior from Billville, Illinois. Both he and Liddell are second team preseason all A-10 picks. And head coach Rick Majerus wants to make sure it's a 20-second timeout. Panthers have the lead at 59 to 48. And I, to me, the big player in the game has been DeWan Blair. Because late in the first half and here in the middle part of the second half, he's the guy that made the plays and picked them up. And he's the guy that this team has confidence in going into the post. They feel that something positive is going to happen when he touches the basketball. And uh, what I really like is his patience down low. And talking to some of the people at Pittsburgh, his work ethic is second to none. He's the first guy here in practice, and uh, now there's a contest to see who can beat him you know, for, to be the first guy in practice. But uh, just a hard worker, a big body. You, you talk about his wingspan at seven foot three, and uh, you know he, he'll tell you about it that you know he's not seven feet, but he can hang with the big boys. Well, he certainly has. Of course, the Billikens will open their new arena in April of next year, Shea Fitz Arena. Be a multi-purpose arena on the campus of St. Louis University. The Billikens. 
Less than three to play. Spin move, powered up, got his rebound and scored. He's got it all. 16 points for Blair. And he's showing it all, the versatility with the spin move. But right here, he's guarding the guard. That time with the Rufford, and he got his first basket of the night. Panthers leading 61 to 50. They've been up by as many as 15. Right now, the lead is 11. Cook on Liddell. Palmed it. I think I've seen more palming calls in this game than I've seen in a long time. We've got a break coming up. Panthers trying to close out a win with 218 to play in Pittsburgh. There's only one utility vehicle that can do it all. Only one that can outrun. Only one that can outpull. Only one that can outride. And only one that can outwork every utility vehicle out there. Only Ranger. Hardest working, smoothest riding. Test drive one today at your local Polaris Ranger dealer. If you want to make your hard-earned dollar go a whole lot farther, get ready. Advance Auto Parts has the low prices guaranteed to save you money. Get ready to get the best price possible on all the parts and accessories you need with our ready-to-go low price guarantee. Nobody can beat our prices on just about anything for your car. So when you want to get more for your money while getting more out of your car, get to Advance Auto Parts for our everyday ready-to-go low price guarantee. Ready and advance. College basketball is back. Complete a great Thanksgiving weekend by experiencing the fun and excitement of the inaugural Legends Classic, one of college basketball's premier season opening tournaments. Come see New Mexico State, Tennessee, Texas, and West Virginia compete in the first college basketball tournament at the brand new Prudential Center in North New Jersey on November 23rd and 24th. Tickets start at just $12 and are available through Ticketmaster.com. Follow all the tournament action at LegendsClassic.com. The Geico Sports Night, 6 p.m., 10 p.m., and 1 a.m. every night on Sportsnet New York. SNY.TV is the only spot for the SNY shop. Your one stop on the web for all the gear from every local team, plus all your SNY supplies. So log on and get the goods at SNY.TV. We go New York Sports online here. This college basketball game on SNY has been brought to you by Infinity, who use the power of design to create dynamic, beautiful automobiles. Tonight's Big East game has been brought to you by Pontiac, official performance machines of the NCAA. Well, I mentioned those coaches with ties to the Big East. Tom Harrion in his first year as an assistant coach at Pittsburgh. That's Paul Biancardi, and you know him. He was at BC. He was at BC, and before the game, we were reminiscing about our old Big East days, and uh, he's a great assistant. I think uh, for you to have a great program, you need assistants like Paul Biancardi because he's going to bring the players that you want into the system, and he's going to help you out a lot with the X's and O's. Well, he's also been an assistant at Ohio State. He was a head coach a couple of years at Wright State and obviously wants to be a head coach again. And he will get that opportunity. Uh, he's already known throughout the college ranks as a great coach, and uh, this is where you have to start sometimes to really go back to being a head coach. Eckerly outside. He's got room for a three. On his way, bending off from the rebound underneath. Ripped out of there by Young, and he is fouled. And you can take your pick. A one of two will be called for the foul. He was double teamed. And it's going to go on two shot. Our game is being produced and distributed by ESPN Regional Television Incorporated. And, and I think if you're Pittsburgh, you got to be happy with your performance. You know you didn't play your A game. I think you got to give credit to St. Louis with their defense. But uh, they did what they had to do to win the basketball game. Their defense is always a staple. And uh, that's what they came out and did tonight. 61-50 in the final two minutes of the second half. Panthers about to go to 3-0. and And hand Rick Majerus his first loss as the head coach of the Billikens of St. Louis. Nice drive by Liddell, doesn't get the roll, and Young another rebound and is fouled again. So we're going to walk all the way to the other end. 
And if you're St. Louis, you're a young team with a new coach who's instilling a new system. It's not going to be easy starting off. Guys are really starting to learn each other and, and where they like the ball. But uh, I think you got to take a lot of positive from this game. And the fact that you hung in there with uh, Pitt, who's ranked fourth in the Big East, and uh, really take that into the Atlantic 10 and, and really know that uh, you can play with the big boys. Only one of three at the line for Sam Young. What is a billiken you ask? Well it's basically came into being in the early 1900s as a good luck charm. And back about 1910 one of the writers in St. Louis thought of the St. Louis football coach looked like the billiken <laughs> and it became the billiken coach and it became the billiken. It is a good luck item and it has various levels. It's good better and best. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Liddell. Higher for three. It's too hard. Lish has the rebound and he's fouled by Cook. So Cook will pick up his second foul. If you buy one, it brings you good luck. If somebody gives you a gift, it's better luck. And if somebody steals you from it, that's the best luck of all. Now, I don't know how that works, but that's what it said. What's coming up for these two teams? This tournament is winding down for both clubs. And we'll get to it in a moment. Lish long turnaround three, and he buries that one. And at a quick timeout, it's going to be taken by the Billikens. Let's take a look at that schedule. For the Panthers, we'll finish off with Mississippi Valley State on the 15th. They've got Buffalo, Boston U, Toledo, and then they'll go to Duquesne and at Washington. And then they will begin Big East play on the road against Villanova on January the 6th. St. Louis, home against Detroit, Furman, at Missouri State, and I know uh, They'll be anxious to get home after spending three days here in Pittsburgh. Not that that's a bad place to spend three days, but I'm sure they'll be anxious to get back to their place. Eleven points for Kevin Lish now with that three-pointer, and he joins the double-figure club, each team with three players in double figures tonight. And these guys from St. Louis are so unselfish. I think Kevin Lish could have been a lot more aggressive tonight. He has a great looking stroke and uh, for this team to truly be successful he really has to be the aggressor and that's penetrating not just for himself but also his teammates. Now most of these starters are out there for Pittsburgh right now. There's still a minute and 20 to play and we've got a foul on the play on Lish I believe. Lish trying to deny. Ronald Ramon the ball and uh, just being a little aggressive and uh, this is what you have to do you're down eight points put them on the line and hope they miss they've been missing all night. That's right they've only made one free throw that was Sam Young Young is one for five Fields is 0 for one and Diggs is 0 for two. One for eight St. Louis just has not had many chances at the line. Meyer is going to come back in as well. Let's see what Ramon can do from the foul line. And he has a good looking good looking stroke. I expect him to make both of them. Well he has not shot any free throws until tonight. And you're right. Nice rotation nice arc on the ball and uh, he gives the ball every chance to go in the basket. Interesting his two field goals were on drives on plays <laughs> inside and he is a three point specialist. He is a specialist and uh, I think he was surprised getting caught inside getting those easy baskets. He hits two at the line. So give Ramon the senior from the Bronx six back to a ten point game. Everybody forgot to go to Liddell who's going to inbound the ball. <laughs> 63 53 Liddell on a drive. Eckerly for three rattles at home. That's his second three pointer of the night. Classic. And his fourth of the year. Classic drawn kick. Draw the defense. Now it's a two on one for the Panthers. If they go that way, they will miss, miss the shot, but will draw the foul. Less than a minute to play. And I expect the Panthers to really handle this pressure. They're a veteran team out there, and uh, it's nothing that they haven't seen before. Um, They're trying to make it 83 and 8 all time in this building and make it 22 in a row against non conference opponents. 70 out of 71. If you're not from the Big East, you don't want to play here, I don't think. <laughs> you don't want to make a trip to Pittsburgh. Uh, these guys simply do not lose in this building. They've done a great job of just beating 
everybody they're supposed to be. With great defense, with great rebounding, you're going to be competitive in a lot of basketball games. And Pitt is one of those teams that just don't lose here. Lish on a drive goes to the right hand and spins out. Ooh. And it belongs to Pitt with 44 seconds to go. Unfortunate for Lish. Very nice job to the basket. Used his body, thought he got hit a little bit, but wasn't able to finish the shot. Well, the Billikens are loaded with lefties. They've got four of them on this team. It's very unusual to have four lefties on your basketball team. Cook handles easily against Polk, gets it across. And there's the reach in foul. That's going to go on Relford. That'll send Young back to the line. And Sam needs to work on his free throw shooting, obviously. He had been two for two coming into tonight, but he just one for five this evening. It's funny, a lot of guys make them in practice, but I had a teammate, Kenny Norman in Milwaukee. He said he makes them in practice, but when the popcorn starts to pop, <laughs> something just blacks out in his mind and he can't make them in the game. I'll so <laughs> mentally, I think guys go through mental blocks on the, on the free throw line. You were a good free throw shooter, though, weren't you? Pretty good, 78%, uh, something like that. Uh, it's just a mental thing. It's a rhythm thing. You get up there and uh, you shoot it with confidence. That looked much better on those two. Give Sam Young a dozen. DeWan Blair leading away with 16. LeVance Fields had his best offensive game of the year with 15 points tonight. Liddell on the drive. That's blocked by Young. No chance for Luke Meyer right there. And another foul in backcourt. Another foul on Lish. Looked like it was going to be a good play. Eric didn't work out there. It was way. a great back door, but the athleticism of Sam Young going and get it at the top of the backboard really showing his ability to get up in the air. The timing was great, and um, this is this is why Pittsburgh has a great defense. Even if you do penetrate the lane, there's always somebody there rotating right there. Sam Young coming over with a great block. Fields now with 16. His career best is 24. He is the first time this season that he scored in double figures. If these teams are playing their third consecutive game. And he does not get the roll, but underneath, foul is called again. And again, it's on Lish. Kevin will pick up his third foul. And it's become a free throw shooting contest here in the last minute, hasn't it? I don't think St. Louis wants to go home. I think they want another game tomorrow or something. Down 12, they continue to foul. But uh, if, if you're St. Louis, uh, there's no shame in losing the pit here in Pittsburgh. A lot of teams have come in, and a lot of teams have left with L's. You know, the Panthers have made, as you mentioned, six straight NCAA appearances, only one of 12 schools in the country. Their winning percentage over that time is fifth best in the USA. They are 164 and 41. Wow, incredible. Jamie Dixon's doing a great job here, just changing the culture. And, uh, giving his team confidence to come out and win every night. And look how the difference is Lish is really looking for his shot right now. He's got 13 points, and we're going to play out the final few seconds. The Panthers are going to get their third win of the season and get their 07 08 campaign off to another good start with an 11 point win. 69 58 is the final score. The Panthers are 3 and 0 and they will be the tournament champions of this Hispanic College Fund Challenge that brought four teams to the city of Pittsburgh. Another win for Jamie Dixon. We've got more to come. The Panthers take the win by 11. The market goes up. You make money. The market goes down. You make money. It's good to be a Barron's reader. Barron's. See what others don't. No one looks at the market with a more insightful eye than Barron's, offering timely coverage of stocks, bonds, mutual funds, everything the independent investor needs to stay informed. Subscribe now and you'll also receive Barron's Online with its daily columns, in-depth market analysis, and powerful tools like the Stock Screener and the Stock Grader. Get 13 weeks of Barron's and Barron's Online, all for only $39. Call now, toll-free, 800-334-6600. That's 800-334-6600. Panthers get the win 69-58. to They are announcing the... Uh, 
MVPs and the players on the all-tournament team. Of course, the Panthers dominate that team. We're very happy to be joined by their head coach, Jamie Dixon. Can't hear. Too loud? Okay, let me turn it down. How's that? That better? I don't know if you can hear me. Is yeah, I hear you. Okay. I hear right. you just fine. Because <laughs> I can't hear myself, so I don't know how you can hear me. Um, good, yeah, it was a good win. I mean, this is a good team. This is a very experienced team. You don't want to be playing teams like this in the first weekend of the, of the season with all these uh, returning guys on the perimeter. But uh, obviously a well-coached team. Won 22 games last year, and uh, we finished it off. We could have played better. I mean, we didn't make free throws uh, through a stretch there. and. And, uh, but we could do some things better on the defensive end, and we know that. But it's the first weekend, the first weekend of the year. What is it about November? You don't seem to lose any games in the month of November. Well, we've been pretty good for a while, so I mean, we, we're pretty good in, in those other months too. But th this is a good, uh, uh, this is a good win, and this is a good start. We played two teams and should be in the NCAA tournament, I believe. I think this team's going to be, uh, we're fighting for an NCAA spot, and I think NIANT will win their league. So. Uh, it was a good start for us. I don't, you know, there's not a lot of big games like this being played in a, in the first weekend of the season. So uh, this is a good win against a good program. Let's talk about Levance Fields a little bit. He had a terrific night offensively, scored 16 points, and he really sparked you offensively. I thought throughout the night. Yeah, uh, he was really good. I thought he, uh, I thought we may have played him a little bit too many minutes, but uh, he was pretty strong throughout. His defense was good, uh, but he really uh, handled the ball and took care of it. I think and made good decisions at the end. We ran a lot of ball screens for him. We seemed to have some success with that, and uh, we did some good things in that regard. We could, uh, we, we need to uh, uh, get a little bit more movement on our motion, but uh, we'll work on that. Well, I thought he was terrific, and I thought another tremendous performance by Dewan Blair. Yes, sir. Uh, he was good too, yeah. Dewan Blair. He was good. He did a lot of good things. He's obviously got great hands around the basket. He's fortunate to be playing on the inside there with the four guys that know what they're doing on the perimeter, so they can pass and find uh, the open guys. So that's a that's an important thing. I mean, he he knows uh, he knows when he's open, he's going to get it, and our guys know that he's going to finish and catch. So uh, he's a good passer too. We got to get him a little bit more patient in the post with reads, but uh, he, he's able to score in the post, and, and uh, I think he's going to get better and better at that. Hey, and you guys do a great job in player development. I mean, he's scary already as a freshman. I know you guys are going to work on his skills, and uh, so by the time he becomes a junior or a senior, he's going to be a monster player. Yeah, he's uh, he's you know he's lost 30 pounds since he came to us in the summer, so uh, it's been it's like we've been waiting for him for about four years here, and now he's here, and then uh, uh, still's got some things to really improve. But you know, he's the first guy to practice every day. He's there to practice an hour before, and uh, we, we do some stuff with him, just mental stuff, and and keep, continue to work on that. So. He's receptive to coaching, and he's getting better. He's improved just in, in, the, in, the, in the 22 practices we've had in, in, the, in the couple games we've had in the season. So uh, I, I hope he continues to play with the same attitude and, and desire. And I think it's contagious. I think now there's a contest of who can beat Dewan Blair into the gym first, and uh, yeah. it's trickling down amongst the team. It is. It's been interesting. <laughs> it's it, it's uh, we get in, we practice at 12:30, but I tell, I've told the guys to get there early, and now it's been about 11:30 that we're going to start doing stuff with individual stuff. So it's good. It's it's a it's a good thing. I think people are seeing they're reaping the rewards of putting in the time. Jamie, thank you very much. Thank Congratulations. Thank Look forward to seeing you again next week Thanks, down man. the road. Appreciate. It. Thank you. Jamie Dixon, the head coach of the Pitt Panthers, who won this tournament. And we'll take a break and come back with more from the Peterson Stop. Event Center. The Panthers put this one away by 11. 69-58 is the final. Reason number 12, why you should own a Thermospas hot tub. They require no attachment to your home's plumbing. Simply fill it with a garden hose and plug it in. Thermospa's unique thermofiltration system is completely built in and filters the water an incredible 144 times a day, so your water stays crystal clear with very little maintenance. All you need to do is enjoy yourself every day of the year. Call to receive a free DVD and 48-page brochure and learn the most important reason. Buying direct, you can own a Thermospa for only a few dollars a day. Call now and we'll include free delivery, free chemicals, and a $400 cash coupon. This $1,000 offer is free. Call 800-796-5599. Thermospas, luxurious hot tubs made affordable. 
Here are three good reasons why you should get off the couch and call an affiliate of La Cordon Bleu Schools North America. One, they'll send you complimentary information about the world famous Le Cordon Bleu culinary program. Two, they can help prepare you for an exciting career as a chef, pastry chef, caterer, or more. Three, it can open the door for the kind of future you've always wanted. Call now for a complimentary brochure. For a free brochure, call the Le Cordon Bleu Schools of North America at 800-719-8167. Well, the Panthers hold off the Billikens of St. Louis. Interesting, St. Louis never had the lead. We had a couple of ties early on, but they never had the lead, but they wouldn't go away until finally Pitt was able to build a 15-point edge. Well, just a solid performance by St. Louis. I don't think they have to be ashamed of, of losing here in Pittsburgh, but, uh, you know, it's growing pains. It's early for this team, and uh, they play solid defense. They did a lot of things that Pittsburgh does and uh, run a lot of same, uh, the, basically the same system, but... Uh, Lish and Liddell, I really believe that they have to be a little more aggressive uh, for this offense to, to run a little more smoothly. Well, they both made the all-tournament team. Let's take a look at the stats, the final stats in this third game of the year for both teams. Each team in the second half made 15 field goals. Rebounding edge belonged to Pitt throughout, and they had the margin in turnovers as well. And as you would expect, behind the play of Dewan Blair, they had the edge in the paint. So it was a typical Pittsburgh victory, I thought. And Blair really showed me a lot down in the post. To be a freshman, to be as poised as he is, I mean, he's a wide body, but he gets the ball and he takes his time in the post. And if he gets double team, he has the ability to pass it out. And uh, this team is going to be a great team in the Big East. They don't get ahead of themselves. They, their staple is half-court defense. They're going to guard you. They're going to keep you out the middle. When you shoot it, they're going to get the rebound. And, well, they uh, also had a great performance, I thought, from LeVance Fields, who in that first half when they weren't shooting the ball very well and they got off to about a 30 percent start shooting he said okay i'm going to take charge of this hit a couple of runners made a three-pointer and just made things happen and as a point guard when your team is not playing well you got to take it upon yourself to be the guy that's going to inject some energy into that basketball team whether that's picking up full court whether that's taking some charges you just have to show your leadership and uh here in pittsburgh they have a great leader and uh from what i understand his nickname is the general here <laughs> well he should be the general sam young also chipping in with 12. he was the tournament mvp levance fields and dewan blair also on that all tournament team uh, once again, our final score at the Peterson Event Center in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The Panthers win it over the Billikens 69 to 58 for Eric Murdoch and our entire Big East television crew here on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh. I'm John Sanders. We thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you down this basketball road this year. The preceding has been an exclusive presentation of ESPN Regional Television, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports. Good night from Pittsburgh, everyone. Hey, Jets fans. That's right, I'm talking to you. As soon as our game is over, switch to SNY the Jets Post Game Live. You don't even have to leave the couch. Just grab the remote and turn to SNY. Get analysis and all our post game reactions. We'll be ready to talk to you every week with Brian Custer, Ray Lucas, and Adam Shine in the SNY studios. Listen to these guys. Watch Jets Post Game Live after every Jets game this season only on SNY. All you got to do is change the channel to SNY. See, it's not that hard. Get your New York sports here. To get your Sportsnet New York on the web, make your homepage SNY.TV, the online home of all things New York sports. Real-time news, scores, team pages, exclusive video, blogs, message boards, and more. Your link to every local sports section. Your link to every single New York team. Pre-game, post-game, every game. A site dedicated to you, the New York sports fan. If you want your SNY online, bookmark SNY.TV. Get your New York sports online here. The Jets pull off an unforgettable victory. All right. But the Jets weren't the only winners today. Yeah. Woohoo. SNY covers the Jets and all their rivals. A 21 point first quarter kept by this powerhouse drive in the red zone. The running game unstoppable right through the heart of the defense. And what better way to seal the win? Mm. It's where New York sports fans spend quality time together. SNY, the TV home of the Jets, and more. It's your New York sports here. 
Daily News Live, presented by City on SNY. The show that broadcasts in the heart of New York that comes straight from the heart of New York sports. The stars of the games, the voices that need to be heard, the writers who bring you the stories. They come to the show that brings the back pages to life. So take a seat at the round table for debate, for issues, for controversy. It's the home court for the talk of New York sports. Daily News Live, presented by City, weekdays at 5 p.m. with encores at 11 p.m. and 1.30 a.m. only on SNY. Get your New York sports here. Broadway Boxing is presented by FreeTheFan.com. Talk sports, win prizes, and by the Connecticut Defenders, Connecticut's hometown team. A big welcome to boxing fans everywhere. This is Broadway Boxing, coming to you as usual from the heart of New York City, the Grand Ballroom in the Manhattan Center on West 34th Street. Our main event tonight spotlights New York City welterweight Edgar Santana making a record 13th appearance on the show to take on Harrison Cuello in a 10-round welterweight battle. Tonight's action begins with the show's debut of rugged Jose Varela when he meets veteran Thomas Davis in an eight-round junior middleweight bout. That's the setup. Now let's get the introductions from ring announcer Greg Dugan. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Debella Entertainment and HD Nets Broadway Boxing, presented by FreeTheFan.com from the Grand Ballroom at Manhattan Center. Tonight's fights are promoted by Debella Entertainment and sponsored by HBO Sports, LocateStock.com, FreeTheFan.com, Talk Sports, Win Prizes, and the Connecticut Defenders, Connecticut's hometown team. This bout is sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission Chairman Ron Scott Stevens, Commissioner Melvina Latham, Executive Deputy Commissioner and General Counsel Hugo Spinola, Deputy Commissioner Frank Gibbs, Director of Boxing Ralph Petrillo, Chief Inspector Felix Figueroa, and Event Coordinator Ron Rizzo. The timekeeper at the bell tonight, John Signore, the three doctors attending this bout at ringside, Dr. Michael Strauss, Dr. Robert Polofsky, and Dr. Angela Gagliardi. And counting the knockdown seconds for this bout, David Fields. The three judges scoring this bout on the 10-point must system, Tommy Kazmarek, Kevin Morgan, and Carlos Ortiz. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge of the action, Tony Chirantano. And now, eight rounds of boxing in the junior middleweight division. Introducing first to my left, fighting out of the blue corner, his trunks are pink. Weighing in officially at 152 pounds, his professional record, 11 wins, four losses, and two draws, seven wins, coming by way of knockout from Knoxville, Tennessee, Thomas the Sandman Davis. And his opponent to my right, fighting out of the red corner, he's wearing blue with white, weighing in officially at 154 pounds, his professional record, 20 wins, 2 losses, 13 wins, coming by way of knockout, hailing from Chinandega, Nicaragua, Jose El Masaya Varela. Jose. You guys re received instructions earlier. Obey my commands. Protect yourselves at all times. Touch them up. Good luck. Touch them up. Good luck. Okay, ready to go for this one. Varela and Davis. As we look at rules quickly, Steve, no surprises. Tom? Judge rules here in New York State pretty much Doc? the same as everywhere else, except for the three knockdown rule. It is in effect here. Doc? And we want to anxious to get a look at Varela, trained by Evangelist Dakota. That's the Cotto clan. So they're serious about him. He lives in L.A., goes down to Puerto Rico to train. And Thomas Davis, inconsistent training. That has been one of his problems. His uh, big flashpoint in his career, first-round KO of Kendall Holt when he caught him with that huge right hand. 
but Davis, a very accomplished amateur, long ago, far away, Armed Forces champion, Tennessee Golden Gloves champion. He's a nine-year pro, and Varela really want to get a look at him. Not much on that hook as he comes forward. But but I have to interrupt a second there. Please do. You said he was an accomplished <laughs> amateur not long ago. He was no, an said, amateur with me. No, I said far long ago and far away. Oh, okay, okay. You, I know you're old. Because <laughs> Brian's old. And, what and, does and that make me? And he's fat. He thinks he's, uh, what is he, all 147 pounds. He's telling us he's fat. Yeah. <laughs> now, what does it make you? No, no. Don't go there. But you can see the action here on um, both guys is looking to see what opportunities are there to take. So you can tell they're both seasoned, both understand it, themselves around the ring. You think so? I, mean, I, I would right now just looking at uh, Cotto. He, he looks like he's trying a lot of things, but in terms of looking like he's got solid technique, I don't see it yet. Well, I've seen Thomas Davis fight many times, and he's the kind of guy that can lull you to sleep and then one shot, boy. He does have good punching power, as Kendall Holt found out. But sometimes you have to go through layers to find that punching power. Yeah, Brian, what do you think of the left hand of Earl? I don't think much of it right now. Boy. Well, you know what, Vallejo, Jose, he, he, he's deceptive in his approach. If you look at it, he looked ordinary, he looked average. But Hold he's putting his shoulder in every punch. So they're like stiff punches. Yeah, he's getting good extension on his shots, and Davis is not doing much. He's got to get dialed into this fight. He's been 10 rounds once before. This scheduled for eight. But those shots are hurting. Tom. Yeah, Davis is, uh, Davis is doing uh, nothing. Let me tell you, though, Varela, man, no hand speed whatsoever. Very slow with his hand. But oh, he's no Pauli Malinacci. But as I said, <laughs> except deceptively, oh, he has a deceptive style. He's quick on his feet, so he gets to the target quick. So that's a good point. That he makes closes, up, yes. Yeah, he closes ground, doesn't he? And that it's, makes it's, up for that lack of hands. That's a great point. And it's also the first round. Maybe he needs a little bit of time to get into this. But right now, he's relentless, throwing a lot of shots, but they're slow shots. Yeah, and Davis uh, willing to eat those shots. Now coming back with a counter right hand, but he gets banged to the body here, winding down the clock, end of round one. But again, I don't think Cotto were really getting a lot of leverage on the, or I should say Cotto, but uh, Morella getting a lot of leverage on the shot, but he's chasing Davis all around the ring as the bell sounds and the first. Don't go anywhere. This matchup continues after this. Turn up the volume on Jets Open Mic, presented by Motorola. SNY brings Eric Mangini into your house. It's got to be consistent. It's got to be consistent throughout four quarters. SNY puts you in the front row for Coach Mangini's press conferences at Hofstra. No game comes down to one catch. No game comes down to one play. You won't miss a word. I like it. Making progress. You won't miss a thing. Jets Open Mic, presented by Motorola, Mondays and Wednesdays at 4.30 p.m., only on SNY. Get your New York sports here. The SNY Spotlight shines on Michael Strahan for an exclusive interview on Tom Coughlin. I never thought it would come to the point where I would like him, but every year he's progressed as a coach and in relationship with players. Did Brett Favre really take a dive for his sack record? I don't know. I don't want to even think about it. A lot of the flack that I've caught, it wouldn't be worth it to me. And his battles with the media. Somebody's holding their breath, waiting for me to apologize. They should call 911. SNY Spotlight, Michael Strahan, Monday at 7 p.m., only on SNY. Get New York sports here. We're back with more Broadway up, boxing. Kid. I don't want to see this. Come on, keep them up. Thomas Davis in pink and in the blue, Jose Varela, and we're joined. And let me congratulate uh, Paulie Malinaji for all of us, Brian and Steve and Nick here. Paulie, job well done. Long time coming for you. Congratulations on that belt. Well, it, it, Paulie, congratulations. Just, just to intercept somewhat. I am very proud of you. I would like to say that firsthand. I'm extremely proud of you. You were always, I love to be honest with guys who I care about. You were always a guy who showed flashes, showed speed, but you never really showed that, that, that it until you fought Cotto. And that I think turned people around, even turned myself around to understand and know that, you know, you truly can accomplish the goal of being world champion. Thanks, bro. I appreciate that, man. It means a lot to me coming from you. Did Paulie fight this past weekend? I must have missed him. <laughs> you know, Paulie, one of, the, one of the things, again, is, uh, you know, you don't you don't have it all your way. You came back from a huge loss. We've seen you on uh, Showbox in the early stages with 
uh, take a tremendous, uh, your, your hands swelling up like balloons, and you know, you've really been, you've had the pain game going on, and coming back, and speaking of pain, Davis is down from a short little left hand. Boy, Davis looks like a guy who is looking for a place to land. He looks shocked. You know, he, he looked like he didn't want to be here from round one. But what I noticed, as, as I mentioned, round one, all those shots were slow, but they were hard and precise. You were right. I was wrong. But I agree with Paulie here as well. Davis is just looking for a spot to hide. And he looks like a 34-year-old fighting like a 44-year-old. Be careful. This is the way he was.